relax guys, uh, you don't need a whole table full of protective equipment to start HEMA. In this video I'm going to take you through the bare minimum that you need to start HEMA and I'm going to explain some of the kit to you so you know um, what we're talking about when we talk about light kit, medium kit, heavy kit and um, also give you an idea of where you can go to get the bare minimum that you need to start training. So one of the issues is, is there's a lot of kit out there and HEMA isn't necessarily a cheap hobby to get into uh, when you start actually getting into sparring and getting your own protective gear. So what you want to do is make sure you're not getting awful gear uh, that you're going to have to replace like really, really quickly or stuff that you just realise you, you're never going to use. You fork out lots and lots of um, money at the beginning and you really regret it. Um, so we want to make sure that you're not buying rubbish gear. Um, in Italian there's that saying, um, chi spende più spende meno, uh, who spends more spends less. Um, I guess you could say buy cheap, buy twice in English. Um, so we want to make sure you're getting good kit and we make, want to make sure you're getting appropriate kit as well. So let's start off with what you need to start HEMA. So I preached about this enough, but get yourself your favourite manuscript first and foremost. There, I've said it, the HEMA purists won't come after me, I've said it. You can also find out how to get hold of your favourite HEMA manuscripts and where to find information on various masters and systems by going to Where to Start HEMA, our other video. That's Where to Start HEMA here on the Hectic HEMA channel. So. Moving on, let's look at the two other breakdowns of kit that we want to be looking at when we're starting HEMA. Firstly is protective gear. So let's talk about protective gear and the bare minimum. The bare minimum you are going to want is a set of gloves and a mask. These should be your first purchases when you are starting out in HEMA. Why? Because your hands take a lot of hits and your head is going to take a lot of hits. And you want to make sure that you're doing HEMA into a ripe old age hopefully with all your digits and all your eyeballs. So let's talk about the different levels of protection with glove. You've got light, medium and heavy. Um, let's start off with light. Light would really just mean a set of leather gloves or a set of leather gloves with a little bit of padding on them. This is basically to make sure that when you're swinging swords around, if a, if a blade goes across your knuckles, you're not going to get cut. And I'll give you an example actually that even with an absolutely blunt HEMA sword with a little bit of a nick, if it goes across your glove wrong, you're going to get a nick in the glove. And I'm so glad that happened to my glove ages ago as opposed to my hand. Um, light gloves are good for things like drilling with rapiers and um, lover, other kind of low impact weapons. Um, not big choppy weapons. I'm going to stress that. Please don't start drilling longsword with just leather gloves. You will regret it eventually. Um, these kind of gloves with a little bit of padding just add a little bit of additional knuckle protection and digit protection, which you'll probably be grateful for if you ever take a whack. Um, you can also get additional inserts, uh, which you can use for fingertip protection. In this glove here, I have a finger protector over my pointy finger um, in this glove because with my gloves, the, my heavy gloves, I take a lot of hits to it. So um, we have this kind of weird mix between light and medium, I guess, uh, with a little bit of padding, um, which is good for things like rapier, which is one of the reasons I got the gloves I'll talk about later is my heavy gloves, because these are an insert. I have all the benefits of having a light glove and I sacrifice very, very little in order to be able to use this uh, with additional protection inside a rapier and I gain some forearm protection as well, some padding. Now medium gloves, if you're just starting out in HEMA, you might not have anything in mind as to what a medium glove would be. Think a lacrosse glove is uh, something which is kind of a, um, something similar. Um, and I'm gonna use uh, a glove which for all intents and purposes looks a lot like a lacrosse glove, the Red Dragon um, training glove. It's really, really good. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for things like steel longsword sparring or anything like that, but it gives you adequate protection. It's nice, it's beefy, it's 
got adequate protection to go against synthetics and some of the slightly heavier weapons if you're using it, but it's not in the zone where you'd comfortably take a hit from a long sword or a heavier weapon to your hands. So that's medium gear. Now, where do we go from there? Gear levels up depending on the situation in which you're training. The next step up would be a heavy glove. Now, my heavy gloves are literally this kind of insert glove which then go into this outer shell. These are the Destroyer Mods Hands of Glory and I like them. I got them because they have that inner glove, uh, that inner glove which I can take out and use for rapier quite easily. Um, takes a bit of faffing actually so I'm not going to say it's quite easy but the option is there to do so. Um, heavy gloves enclose your hand and often your forearm with an additional level of hard shell protection which stops your fingers getting absolutely broken um, to pieces when you are sparring with heavy weapons or at really heavy intensity. There is a trade-off. You have more protection, you have less dexterity in your hands as you're using them. So you need to find a glove which is kind of that happy uh, balance point between sparring gloves. Uh, by sparring glove are very, very good. A lot of my friends use them when they're using long sword for sparring. Uh, I wanted something slightly beefier. Um, I value my hands, not that sparring glove isn't a good brand. I just like the look of these and they seem perfect. So you choose the glove which suits you. A market favorite, um, I don't think anybody's going to come after my head if I say this, tends to be the Spez Lobster Gloves. They're, um, as, the, as the glove implies, it's a kind of mitten, it's got a hard shell of plastic, and it protects your knuckles and your fingers really, really well. Um, and it gives you some wrist protection as well as an added bonus. So that would be a heavy glove. Um, you'll find, obviously, that as with anything, the more protective equipment, uh, the more protection it offers you in the equipment, the price range is obviously going to go up. If I was going to recommend a glove at this point in time when you're starting out and you might not be sure what you want to do or you might be training with synthetics, why not go with something like the Red Dragon um, protective glove, which is really, really good. It's that happy medium in between. You have some dexterity, so you can use it with slightly more, let's say something like an arming sword or something like that and get some good protection there. Um, and likewise, if you're drilling with long sword, drilling with long sword, you are able to use it just to protect your knuckles as you're going forward and training. Okay, let's talk about masks. Masks come in two flavours, 350 Newton and 800 Newton, um, normally. Let's uh, look at masks then. Masks, what do they do? They protect your face. Um, what we want to do in HEMA is make sure we take, uh, or when we take hits to the noggin, because it is going to happen, we do so safely. So get a good mask uh, so you can drill properly and you can also spar properly. Um, you can notice over my mask I have this weird hood, which you might not be familiar with if you've never done HEMA before. What does the hood do? The hood adds an additional layer of protection between my head and my opponent's weapon. There's extra padding on the sides of the head, on the side of the neck. There is a reinforced, uh, reinforced uh, throat guard in front of the throat in case I take a thrust. And also importantly, there is this tongue over the back of the head with additional padding and protection, which stops uh, my head taking so much impact if I accidentally get hit to the back of the head when I'm sparring or training. Um, a mask is absolutely essential. If you're going to get anything other than a set of gloves, get yourself at the bare minimum a 350 Newton decent fencing mask. Make sure it's in decent nick condition and uh, you'll be absolutely laughing. Now, where can you get them? A number of places. I'll go through some good suppliers afterwards. But a lot of the time you can get something like a good Leon Paul fencing mask off eBay or some other second hand kind of online uh, auction market. Um, I've got a number of things off eBay in the past and um, there's always somebody there who's looking to flog their old fencing kit. Just make sure it's protective enough, it's a good brand, you're not ordering it off some dodgy website on the internet uh, with no standards and that it's going to be something that protects you. And always remember you can level up the protection on your mask as you go along. 
So I've said before, you level up your gear depending on the situation in which you find yourself in or you might find yourself in in Hema. So for example, if you're going to a tournament and you're going to get hit by really heavy weapons or people who are really going hell for leather, you might want more protection. That's my recommendation. So what kind of gear are you going to use? Um, you can level up your gear. Always have gloves, always have a mask, additional stuff. You can get forearm protectors with elbow protectors. You've got knee guards and shin guards for lower legs. You've got upper arm guards and shoulder guards, um, groin guards. Groin guards are always a really good thing to have, guys. Um, you'll thank me for it when you actually get hit between the legs, and that does happen. Um, just remember the bare minimum is always gloves and a mask. So let's talk about trousers and jackets and other bits of HEMA kit. Um, you can get jackets, trousers, like I said, um, and they are probably when, when you start really kind of developing your kit um, after your gloves and your helmet, you'll probably go with a decent jacket and hopefully a decent set of trousers as well. Uh, and what they do is they level up from light, medium to heavy. And the heavier you go with it, the more padding you have on the jacket, the more it absorbs. And you also get different levels of resistance in the fabric that they're using. Like the mask, you've got 350 usually as a minimum, and it goes all the way up to 800, uh, which is great if you're really going, like I said before, health for leather. Um, this is the kind of stuff that you can worry about later though. Um, you can start out, like I said, gloves, mask. So let's talk about weapons then. Um, where are you gonna start with weapons? Now, the instinct for a lot of people is to go to a steel weapon straight away um, because they want to do weapons. They want to use real weapons in their mind and they don't like the idea of using a synthetic. If you're starting out and you're not sure what weapon you want to use, or maybe you're starting out on a budget, but you want a decent training simulator to use at home. Just go with a synthetic. There is absolutely no shame, guys, in getting a decent synthetic. I've talked about it in previous videos. A synthetic sparring sword or training sword is really, really good. They're durable, they're flexible in the thrust, and you can, you can, loads of people are really clever. They do various modifications if they find that the blades are slipping too much and all sorts. They're just really good, cheap ways of getting into training. Don't feel that you need to fork out three, four hundred pounds on a training sword straight away. Why not build up your your armory, so to speak, with a few synthetic swords first and just wait maybe until you get the sword that you know you really, really want. So you've got synthetic trainers, which are a really good option. You've also got wooden wasters. I would suggest that wooden swords are a little bit more dangerous then using synthetic swords, synthetic swords like these, um, the red dragons, they, they're durable and you don't need to worry about them splintering. Um, and they're really good simulators nine times out of ten. I would, I would always recommend a synthetic sparring sword or training sword over a wooden waster. So next after synthetics we obviously go to steel swords or steel weapons and they're pretty much what they say on the tin, the steel. You can use them for sparring um, as long as they are HEMA safe. Now, what I would suggest is whenever you are looking online for a sword or weapon that you are going to be using for sparring or drilling, make sure it is rated for the for use in HEMA. It has the correct edge on it and that you are uh, able to use it in your club. Don't waste money getting something that looks really, really cool and isn't good. Um, there's a whole variety of brands out there like Siggy, Regnier, um, you've got HF Armoury, there's loads of really good places that you can get decent uh, training steel weapons from. But let's go with the bare minimum. If you're going with the bare minimum for a training sword, I would avoid wooden wasters and I would go with a synthetic training sword like I said before. Why not start out with a synthetic and then move on to something like a steel training sword when you know what weapon you are going to be using and what you want to dedicate a lot of time and energy into. So let's talk about where you can get some bang for your buck when you're buying the bare minimum uh, gear. I'm only going to recommend places to you that I've personally bought from or that my training partners have bought from and we agree that it's a good place to start and buy things from because we don't want you wasting your money, frankly. Um, one of the cheapest ways 
to get in. You'll remember I said the bare minimum are gloves, a mask, and if you really want a training sword. If those are the three things you are looking at getting, I would recommend going to the night shop. Uh, I will link them down in the bottom of, um, in the description of the video with a, with a link, and they do HEMA starter kits. And they're all from the Red Dragon line, um, but they start off for £145, including tax. You manage to get hold of a set of Red Dragon sparring gloves. You manage to get hold of a synthetic sword of your choice, whether that's a back sword, a long sword, a messer, an arming sword. You can choose which one you want to use, and you also get a mask rated for HEMA. At 350 newtons which is really really good it's for 145 pounds including tax uh, americans and anywhere else in the world you know do the maths and you'll figure it out yourself whatever the conversion rate is going at the moment but it's a really good place and the night shop are really really good in my experience if you're a member of a hema club you can get a discount if your club lets them know that you're in a club you get a discount um and postage and shipping is really, really quite fast, I've got to say. And the night shop is just a generally good shop to shop from in general. Um, the, the owner knows exactly what he's talking about, as far as I know, in terms of uh, what you need for HEMA. So he rates things carefully and appropriately. Uh, you've also got the chances of levelling up with the night shop. So if you decide that you had a little bit more money to spend and you could spend a bit more than £145, you could go up to £170 and they offer you also a gorget, which is an additional piece of neck protection, a collar that you can use, uh, and a groin guard, the holy, holy groin guard. So that's for £170. You can also level up to £108 and you get additional shin and knee protection. And if you want to go up to £252, including tax, you also get a nice bag to store all your kit in. So that's a really good place to go. £145, you can get yourself some gloves, you can get yourself a synthetic weapon, and you can get yourself a mask. So let's talk about levelling up your kit a little bit more if you've got a few more pounds to spend. You can go to a place um, which I found personally very, very good in my experience, and so has my training friend from the club. We both got personalised, custom-fitted um, HEMA gear, from them made to measure and we got it really cheaply actually i think for me including postage and packaging it was somewhere around the 300 pounds mark i'd have to check my um i'd have to check my account uh, but when i do a full-on review of all the kit i got from them to let you know what i got you will uh, and how much for i'll tell you the exact prices um but what can you get from them for, you can get jackets trousers socks uh, forearm and elbow protection, knee and shin protection, a groin guard, a gorget, the mask overlay, and you can get all of that for I think around about £300. It's a really good deal if you're starting out um, and you're looking to like get a lot of gear very, very quickly. And I should also mention you also get a really decent uh, kit bag to carry uh, all your gear around in as well, and you get an awful lot of bang for your buck. Um, like I said, I'm not going to recommend anything to you from other places that I haven't personally tried or my friends haven't tried. There's some other really good outfitters that you might want to look at. For example, Spez do a really good uh, line of fencing wear. Feel free to go and take a look at them and just Google. Um, look at reviews on YouTube is, um, is a good place to start actually, looking at reviews on YouTube. So what should you wear when you go to a HEMA club for the first time? Well, basically something protective. The bare minimum you want to turn up with is all your skin basically covered uh, if you're going to be doing any kind of sparring. Um, I don't know what your club might do on the first time you turn up, but a good um, idea to have when you're doing HEMA, and especially if you're sparring, is don't have exposed skin. Exposed skin is just an additional surface on which you can get a cut. And even if you're wearing something like a thick hoodie or something like that, accidents can happen. As a bare minimum, when you're turning up, I would suggest, obviously, wear a t-shirt if it's hot or something like that. But if you're going to do anything more intense, um, at the very least, have something like a thick hoodie to put on. Just an additional layer to protect your arms and any exposed skin. Um, something like some tracksuit bottoms, some joggers, something like that, just to cover your legs. 
something flexible, which isn't going to restrict your movement, uh, but also protect your skin, cover your skin, so to speak. For footwear, just wear some kind of light-soled shoe. These are kind of some barefoot shoes uh, I use for fencing because it just gives me more grip and it just lets me feel the ground better when I'm fencing. But just wear some trainers, wear some sneakers, something like that when you go along. The bare minimum you want to be getting right at the beginning when you're purchasing your own kit, though, is always a set of gloves and a mask. And then if you want to go further, get yourself a synthetic training sword. This is my opinion, but I think it's a really good way to start. And I think my colleagues would probably echo that, actually. At the bare minimum, some decent gloves, hopefully in the medium range, like the Red Dragon gloves, uh, a decent mask to protect your face, and then... A protect, uh, uh, some kind of synthetic training weapon or a training weapon that you want to choose if you've got the money to fork out straight away. So guys, I hope this has been helpful. Um, you know where to start now. I've given you some decent links to go and take a look at. Uh, please look at the links in the description to see if there's anything you'd like to like the look of. Um, look around. There's always deals on, on HEMA kits from various HEMA retailers, so to speak. So knock yourself out. Just remember... Go with what you need at the beginning, not with what you want. Um, your club, when you turn up, will likely have old or spare training gear that you can use, like a mask and gloves, hopefully. They'll also have plenty of synthetic training swords or other training weapons that you can use when you turn up. So don't be tempted, or um, don't feel pressured, I should say, into forking out loads and loads of money straight away. Go along, see what you like. Take a look at the other equipment that your friends and colleagues are using there and decide what you might want to buy next. And they'll be able to guide you and you might even be able to try on some of their kit because HEMA dudes and girls are really, really cool like that. They'll be more than happy most of the time to let you try on some piece of equipment. They've got like some decent gloves or something like that. And they'll give you an honest opinion whether they think it's worth your money or not. So don't feel pressured. Just turn up with no exposed skin. Um, and just go with that. And when you're going up to the next level, gloves, mask, and then later, some kind of training weapon, if you so wish. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, my name's Matteo from the Hectic Hema channel. If you're interested in following us for more information like gear reviews, ticks and tri uh, tips and tricks, um, interviews, and all other sorts of good HEMA related stuff like combat content, like and subscribe, join the channel, and we'll be popping up on your newsfeed in no time with some more cool videos. Until next time.